Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial for my four color stripe single crochet baby sweater. For this size, it's turned out to be about a three to six month size. I made it using Red Heart Amore. It's a four weight with a 5.5 millimeter eye hook turned out about this size. I still think you could go up another hook size and make it a couple size bigger if you needed it more for an older child, maybe a J. Because I also made this sweater, same exact pattern, with Red Heart Dreamy, which is a five weight yarn. Um, let me show you. It's bulky, five and I used a K size hook, and this is measuring uh, for 3T. So using the same pattern, but if you choose a little bit different yarn, you can, you can get a variety of sizes here. Uh, today, for the tutorial, um, I'm going to use Peyton's Canadiana, and I think it's, it's very similar to Karen Simply Soft and to Hobby Lobby, I Love This Yarn. It's also a four weight, it's a recommended H hook. I've done a sample, I've started a little sample with um, an I hook, and I'm going, to, for this tutorial, I'm gonna go right up to a J and see if we can't get it a little bit bigger. So with the I hook, it was measuring exactly the same. This is my, my row that I would need to combine for the armholes. And so I wanna see if we can't get just a little bit bigger size just simply by changing up our hooks. Um, sometimes that's the easiest way to make a pattern, a baby sweater bigger without having to alter the pattern too much. So obviously there's lots of options. You can stop and just do a little trim. I mean the, the or I'll, you know, you can add a hood on with this and then continue the ribbing. Lots of options here for this sweater. All still the same basic pattern. I love it. All right, so we are starting with 58 chains. So I already have my 58 chains ready to go. And on this base row, all you need to do is start in the third chain from the hook and work half double crochets in each stitch across the row. We're going to start with this base row of all half double crochets. So that's yarning over, inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling back through, and then yarning over and pulling through all three loops. Okay, work that, work one into each chain space across the row. All right, so here's my base row of just all half double crochets. I will, I chained one, and now I'm turning. And now the pattern will continue with all single crochets. So I'm inserting my hook right into that first stitch. You can see those two V's that are looking at you. There's, of course, the two V's that are on the top. We're going to come right down underneath and insert our hook under both of those. Pull up a loop and work a single crochet. We will work single crochet in each one of these first 10 stitches. Now the pattern for this is on daisyfarmcrafts.com and if you're only watching this on YouTube, the link is in the descriptions. And I highly recommend that you go get that pattern and follow us along as we do this. It'll make a little bit more sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to make what I always call just a corner, add shaping to around the neck. So you insert your hook. We will be doing a series of single crochet, chain two. And then right in that very same space, work one more single crochet. Okay, that's our first corner. 
Now we will work single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. Okay, how many have I got here? And I, I don't count the, uh, when I'm counting, I don't count the corner. I start with the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven single crochets in between each corner space. Now we're, let's work another corner. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all into the same stitch. We just went over the shoulders. That's what that part is. Now let's work single crochet into each stitch across the back and we will be doing a total of 18. I have 18 single crochets between the two corner spaces. Here's my next corner space right here. Single crochet, chain two, right into there, single crochet. Now we're back over the other shoulder. Let's do seven. Double check that I did seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our last combination corner stitch of single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Now we should have 10 spaces left, 10 stitches to work into, just to match the other side. Here's my 10th, worked right here into this space. We got it. Now chain one and turn your work. Now we essentially are increasing for the next 11, 12 rows, I think. I'll have to refer to the pattern here in a second, but work one single crochet into each stitch right up to the corner, right up to those chain twos. So you know that single crochet you worked before you chain two that was part of that corner space, you're gonna, you want to work into that one as well. A lot of people have uh, seem to forget that one or think that you skip over it, you don't. So here's Here's that first single crochet. Make sure you still work into it. Go in between these two, the little legs of the stitch. Then into the chain two space. You see this space that the chain two has made? That's where we work our corner, maybe I should call it corner combination. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Now here's another um, stitch I don't want you to accidentally miss and that is the next single crochet that you work into. You'll see that one the legs are kind of you know still in that corner space of the row below. So I want you to make sure you get that stitch every time. It's real easy. To, it can get smashed and so you and quickly you want you accidentally skip over it. So make sure you don't skip over that. There you go. I'll work to one more corner. 
just so that you can see. And all the counts are on are on the pattern. I I counted every row for you so you know exactly how many single crochets are in between each corner in these increasing rows. Here's my chain two space. Work that corner combination. And then continue on. Don't forget where your first stitch goes. Right here. I always was looking for maybe the, the leg of it. Look for that first bar and then go right over to the left of it. All right. We, let me check the, double check the pattern, but I believe you're increasing this way. We'll do a color change after row nine. Okay, and then you continue increasing with the new color for two more rows, 10 and 11. And then we'll join for the armholes on row 12. And that's where I'm gonna, let me, um, let me do a couple more rows and then I'm gonna show you how this is a little bit larger size than the other one. All right, I have increased this for nine rows and for the next two rows, we're going to do the color change. Um, I think for this version, I'll just pick this medium teal color. Your sweater can be any color that you would like, those, those colors. I think it's nice and colorful. I love how things are so colorful these days for kids. Okay. Before you finish that last stitch, you work one, your last single crochet, you pull up a loop and you stop. And I'm going to add the color just simply by laying, laying it over the hook and pull through. All right, now I will work this color for two more rows and then we join for the armholes. And um, if you've never done that before, don't be afraid. It, it really is not as hard as it looks or is sometimes as hard as the pat, you know, sometimes reading the pattern, it's a little bit confusing what we're doing when it says skip over so many stitches. Um, okay, then after, uh, let's do these two rows. Let's compare size and see how we are size-wise with our J hook. All right, so now I have row 10 and 11 done, and now I'm comparing it to this other made with the I hook, and this is the difference with the J hook, is you get just a, a few more inches, and that will make it a little bit bigger as we combine to make, you know, across the shoulders. Um, this is the row where we are going to make the armholes. So did you see how I, that's essentially how this, it's going to look after we're done with this next row. So I've already chained and turned. Work your single crochets. There should be 20 stitches on this row, clear up to the corner. And then I'll show you how to combine and make that armhole. All right, I just worked 20 right up to the corner. Here's my chain two space. Now you're essentially gonna do the same stitch. We'll start with a single crochet and chain two, but instead of working your last single crochet right here in this chain two space, we will fold it over and you're gonna work your single crochet into the next space. That's it. Now you've joined, made a little loop, made a little armhole. Now work all of your single crochets across the back and I'll meet you over there and I'll show you again how that's done. All right, I've worked all the way across the back. I'm to the chain space. Here we go. Work one single crochet, two chains, come over here into that two chain loop space, 
and work your other single crochet. Now make sure you still have the same number. You should have 20 going out to the corner. Now, if you don't, that's where um, your counting is off. And somewhere along the line, you did miss one of those stitches coming out of the corner or leading up to the corner. Um, it's really important that you have the same number of stitches from the front of the sweater to the armhole because your sweater will align straight up and down in the front. If you're off, it um, you can start getting a really crooked appearance or you know one side will be larger than the other. So double check your counting. Now all you will be doing is working. Let me show, I'm going to show you what to do under the arms and then you'll just be working um, back and forth doing your color changes every 10 rows I believe it is. You'll you know, check the pattern on that. I clearly spell it out. But let me show you what you'll what you'll do when you get over here to the um, cor uh, uh, around those chain two spaces. So here we go. We're starting to work single crochets in each stitch. I'll meet you under the armhole over here. Okay, here we go. I wanna make sure you, you get each and every stitch here. So even though this, this kind of looks funny and you're not exactly sure where to insert your hook. So here's one stitch. Here's that one, that first single crochet of the corner. Now work two single crochets and I just go around the chain like that and now your stitch is still right there there's your next one okay you'll do the same thing and then you just start working back and forth and build the length of the sweater and I will meet you back when it's time to work on the sleeves entering the sleeves so I'll go I'll go get to work I'll probably have to film this tomorrow to get to the sleeves I'm, I'm losing my light here but anyway hopefully it will all go well get your colors in and um, and then I'll show you how to do the sleeves all right I am back and I kind of cheated a little bit and I already worked one sleeve so you could see where we're headed next. See the sleeve that we're going to be making. So here is what I have so far. Hopefully you are to this point where you've got all the colors and we're going to finish this bottom with the ribbing right at the first. Now I had to cut my off white because obviously I used it over here for, for the sleeve, but you will be continuing on let's see let me hold on hold on let me get my white all right so you will not have cut your yarn you'll just get to the end like this and you will chain two and turn and we'll start working double crochets down the on um, each end we're working on the ribbing here let me show you on this sweater here we're working on the ribbing portion down here. So that's where we're headed. All right, so you will not, you know, this is what you'll have and when you finish, this is where you should be right now. And we will chain three and turn. And that first stitch, this first chain three counts as your first stitch. So you'll, you'll be working into your next one, and I will just have to add in my yarn here. This is a double crochet. Um, I'll have to weave those ends in after. You will work one double crochet per stitch all across the bottom. 
And then on the next row, we'll, we'll work on that ribbing. So why don't you get a double crochet in each stitch working across the bottom. All right, so I've worked one double crochet into each stitch along the bottom here. I'm at the end. I will chain two or three. It's up to you. I'm kind of, I don't know, I'll try chain three. I don't like them too tall, uh, but we'll be fine. This is what's called a post, front post and back post double crochet ribbing. So I start usually by pushing one forward and then pushing a post backwards. So you kind of have to get your hook back like this, pull it through, finish your double crochet like that. So insert from front to back, pop that post forward and then insert from back to, I guess from front to back that way, back to front, I don't know, whatever, just pop it towards the back and then finish your double crochet. All right, so continue alternating these across the bottom and um, we will work, I believe I did, let me see, uh, I think I did three rows of these. Well, we'll see what it, what it looks like when we get done. All right, I'm already back to the, to the um, end of the row here where we first started. Here's that chain three. So I just want to show you that I just generally work one double crochet around that stitch like that. Then we'll chain three and turn our work and work another row. And I just was thinking as I was making this, I think it would look nice to go ahead and match the amount of rows I worked on the sleeves and I did five rounds. All right, I finished five, five rows of this ribbing and I think that looks really nice and that does match how many rows you'll need to do for the wrist. So five rows it is. And feel free to even go more. If you're different yarn, I mean, that you can be really flexible with if you're not using the same yarn as I am. All right, let's get to the sleeve. Of course, I've already woven in a lot of my ends. You can do that later or take the time to do that now. But most importantly is you want to make sure you are pulling your, starting your work and making sure the sweater is turned in the direction, like, you know, you could have asked, you know, have it be this way. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but the most important thing, make sure you look at these Vs and that they're pointing in the direction as if you just would have chained and turned your work. So that is important. All right, just come down here to that, to that member that chain the chain two that hooked the sleeves together, we'll go ahead and insert our hook in between them and just kind of grab your yarn, give us, do a chain, and we will work single crochet three together. And we wanna hit the next space and the next space, and then I want you to make sure your last leg ends at the very first stitch here. Oh, and I'm kind of crocheting over that tail just to kind of secure it right here at the first. So I don't want you to be tricked by this one. This is actually the side of a post. I want you to work in between the stitch. So try and find those legs of the single crochet and insert your hook. This is the first stitch of the round. And that's where we'll finish our single crochet three together. All right, that kind of just helps with the corner. And we don't have to always crochet over that tail. Now work 
single crochet into the next 25 spaces around. Just one per. And really what the next 25, it'll, it'll end you up uh, with one left to go because that will be the start of our next single crochet three together. We're just kind of putting a leg is what they call it, you know, just half of the stitch there around. Okay, I'll meet you when I get around there. All right, so, so far you have 25 single crochets plus the one single crochet three together. And that should have gotten you all the way around to the other side. Here's that last stitch of the round. You can see the two legs of the single crochet. This is the side of a post. So that's, we're gonna fill in that spot if we want or just kind of skip over it. I'm gonna let you decide on this side. I will probably work one into here. I'm gonna kind of, I'd rather come down to the chain down here because we've got um, some stitches to work into, two and then work three. And I think that would fill in the corner just like that. Just sort of kind of gathers these stitches together. And then you'll slip stitch to that very first stitch, just like that, chain one and turn. Okay, now your next stitch will be right over here. Not this space right below, but just one over. Let's start right there. And now work single crochets all the way around. And we should be working 27 of them. We'll count together when we're done with this row. Okay, I'll meet you around at the end of the okay, round. Okay, I just wanna show you where the 27th stitch is worked. It's just hard on this round, but you're going, and, and if you're confused, that's why I say just, just count so you make sure you know you've done 27 single crochets. And then let's slip stitch to this first little V that you see. Now chain one and turn. And again, you always start the round kind of to not the stitch that's right below the chain, but to the next one over. Kind of look for those two little legs. That's where you want to place your first stitch. Took me the longest time to learn how to do this so that the seam all is in a straight line. I used to kind of just guess. And so you kind of have to I feel like I'm skipping over a stitch and then when I finish the round, I'm working right up to the stitch. But I just, I usually just count after every round just to make sure I have an even number of stitches. If anything, that's the most important. Just make sure you've got the same number of stitches of single crochets. So I'm working around Headed that way. And honestly, it gets easier once you get further away from that underarm area. Those first couple rounds are hard to see, but it gets easier as the work gets built out. Okay, here we go. We're headed down there. So you have this stitch to work. And sometimes if you can just see that, I feel like just that one um, pointer maybe, this down there, that's how you know. It's pointing, that's your last stitch right there. And then slip stitch to the first V that you see like that. Chain and turn. Okay. 
you will continue working that until you have 10 rows that will match, you know, down to here. Then you'll chain and you'll do 10 more rows of this color and then 10 more rows of this color. And then we do just a little bit of um, uh, decreasing and I'll, I'll show you that. So I'll go get to work on that and um, good luck. I hope you get there and then I'll come back and show you how to do the wrist. All right, so I hope you have your, your sleeve done to this point. Hope it went well, joining the rounds and everything. I've already um, joined and chained one and turned. And we're just going to decrease our wrist around just a little bit, kind of pull in the stitches. And what we'll do, how we'll do that is we're, we will single crochet two together like that, and then work four regular single crochets around and then we'll repeat that there's four now single crochet two together and this just helps to bring the wrist in just a little bit make it look more um, detailed I guess one two three, four, bring these two in, continue around now, it doesn't work out exactly, so on the last stitches, you know, you'll just um, single crochet two together and then just work one. All right, okay, so continue that. Now when you join the round, you'll chain three and turn, and we will work one double crochet into the tops of each of these stitches. Like so, all the way around. Just like on the bottom of the sweater, work one round of all double crochet. All right, we're right here to the end of the row. There's our chain three. I like to just kind of ignore that chain three and just start working the front and back post stitches because we will just continue working around. We don't need to join rounds or anything. Just work alternating front post and back post like you've been doing before like you did on the bottom except this time you just can go around and around for five times and um, and then slip stitch at the end and and weave your end in and then you've got a nice little cuff on that sleeve okay there are just a few things I want to show you we're almost done here, and I think you can finish up the rest on your own. I'm just gonna show you the difference in size. So remember at the, you know, we used a little bit bigger hook for this size, and so it does make a little bit of difference there. You can get a little bit of um, a width on the sweater down here, like that. So it makes it just a little bit. So this would be, this would be your size three to six month, with the eye hook this would be more of a six to nine month and then of course i have the one that i showed you with the bulky weight that really turns out much larger probably like a 2t to 3t so that's how you could get different sizes out of this pattern all right i'm just going to show you one th so of the two finishes what i would do is for this version all I did after I finished the sleeve is that I just simply pulled up a loop in a corner, started working up and around, and then finished off with just single crochet. That's one option. And then you come back and you'll attach, oh, I think I did, you know, 20 or 30 so chains. I just pulled up a loop and chained and then tied off. That's all I did for that type of an attachment. 
and or you could put a button and to start the hood all you need to do is pull up a loop in this corner here pull up uh, you know with the gray and you just start working your single crochets in each stitch around even in the corners you work around you chain and you turn and you're and you, you make those color changes and it will get really large it'll be a big square piece that you'll fold in half and sew together and then you'll start your ribbing and finish that off i think you'll find with following the pattern the um that you'll really will be okay there's no new stitches to learn or anything so maybe i can just show you on this sweater what i mean and let me adjust my camera up so that you could see more this is the seam so i just worked you know this back and forth back and forth and then you'll seam the two sides together and then what you'll want to do is come down here and just start with your double crochets just that one round of double crochet work turn and you just work that ribbing stitch all up and down for three or four times this one you can decide how thick you want it and then i just attached this little toggle and it fits anywhere in between these bigger it's why i love to do this ribbing stitch for to finish off a sweater because it can fit into any hole you don't really have to section off a um a buttonhole so and i'll probably go to the store i i only had one i need to go to the store and get a few more before i give this away so anyway the patterns on our website if you're watching this on youtube the link is down in the descriptions i wish you good luck um making this don't stress out i love it it's just so it really is a simple you know pretty stress-free project and i think it really turns out darling so anyway good luck to you and thank you as always for being interested in what we're making and um, come and share with us in our Daisy Farm group if you'd even need more help. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, crocheters now that are making these same patterns and sharing their tips and tricks in case I have uh, not explained it clearly, which happens. And, um, and especially if you're a beginner, lots of great uh, people, ladies in there that are helping each other out and fellow beginners. So come and find us there. All right, you have a good day.